Shalom. Kohalayim la Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Much peace and blessings to all you sense of Akiyam out there just pushing this 100% truth with all sincerity, faith, and with charity. This is your brother Oz from the Great Millstone, Miami Camp, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. What I want to speak on in this lesson, I hope is not only edifying, but also exhorting. This is going to be an exhortation, a faith booster, Lord willing. Okay, this is inspired through the Spirit by a, a thought that the Lord had me think, okay? As we know, uh, man's thoughts are uh, ordered of the Lord. Okay. So, as we all in this truth, we have our mental battles. Okay. Because this war, this fight that we're in, is a spiritual fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We also wrestle again. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And the battlefield is in your mind. That's where these different left hand spirits and principalities uh, primarily attack you at. Okay? They're. Uh, agenda their assignment their goal is to get you to ultimately cast away the faith and when you look up the word uh, Satan I believe you look at it in the Greek it says uh, you know the adversary but it says uh, his, his, his job is to get you or well, to agitate you to the point of overthrow meaning overthrow your faith their, their ultimate goal is for you to just give up the spirit, just to stop fighting, to say, I can't do this anymore, to have you doubt your own salvation. And once they do that, they win. Okay? They want you to get you to uh, turn your back on the Lord. That's the, that's, when you read the book of Job, that's what Satan was trying to do the whole time. Okay, he even uh, jumped on his wife to tell him to curse the Most High and die. But call him Yahweh Bashem Shai. What Job kept his integrity and sinned not with his lips. He kept his faith, and that's uh, a great example for us, and also the greatest example Yahweh Shai. All right, he 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 faced the biggest battle. You know, Satan and, and left-hand spirits was in his mind coming at him all the time. Even up until his his very last moment on the earth before he gave up the spirit. And and we know the story. He, he uh, resurrected and he received his reward. Okay. But um, we all go through those things in this truth. And... Sometimes, you know, uh, not we don't take heed to those seducing spirits. But nevertheless, they come. We rebuke them with the scriptures. And we encourage ourselves through the spirit. We encourage ourselves. We meditate on the scriptures. We meditate on what the, what the word says. We meditate on the promises. And we hit Satan and counteract him with, with the scriptures. And what the Lord had, had me do was I... Uh, what I like to do sometimes, I think about all the, the the positives, the things about this truth that are uh, irrefutable, okay? And one of those things that came into my mind, you know, sometimes I think about the, uh, the brothers, the brotherhood, you know, for you brothers out there that's part of camps that have a uh, fellowship with uh, fellow uh, believers, you think about how 
you would have never met these men in the world. Some brothers knew each other from the world, but you know the bond that we have is ultimately of the spirit of the truth. That's one uh, irrefutable truth right there. This has to be the truth, basically upon that, simply upon that, because you don't see Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans with a real brotherhood, uh, with the uh, unfeigned love, you know, real true love and unity outside of the truth. You don't have that. Okay, that's just one example, but another example the Lord had had come into my mind was no other religion or school or of thought or philosophy would have made you a better man than you are today. Okay, no other religion, school of thought or philosophy would have been able to make you a better man than you are today okay and that's a hundred percent true now are they there any you know philosophies or you know school of thoughts out there that a man a carnal man may undertake and have some positive qualities that he can uh, gain through that sure okay you have uh, something that's called stoicism which uh, the Paul Tahar speaks on you know, that's the first time I heard of it which goes back to uh, uh, the Roman Empire which uh, is also becoming big or bigger in, in this time period that we're in now because there is an influx, well, a pendulum, uh, a pendulum swing back towards masculinity. Because for the past decades, few decades, there's been an onslaught of emasculized, emasculization, if that's the word, I mean being uh, emasculated uh, by the elites through through media. Okay. But the pendulum is starting to swing back the other direction. And it's swinging hard. So you have a lot of men that that's, uh, want to get into being masculine. And one of the uh, philosophies that a lot of men are, are learning is uh, stoicism. Which basically, basically is uh, you have a lot of different YouTube pages popping up pushing uh, stoicism. And a man being stoic. A man being hard and, and grave, uh, you know, not being silly or not uh, focusing on carnal pleasures. A man actually focusing on having morals and integrity and things of that nature, which are good things. All right. But this truth, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know, the experience that we have in this truth. And the lessons that we learn being in this truth and, and fighting in this fight, you, you 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 can't get that anywhere else. You can't get or obtain the wisdom that we have today through the spirit from from this truth anywhere else on the planet. Okay? And that's an irrefutable truth that this has to be the has to be the truth. Okay? Just off that alone, this has to be the truth. So I'm going to get a few scriptures to back up my claim. And Lord willing to set fine. Okay, the first scripture I get, uh, Psalms 119 and 9. By Yath, wherewith, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Okay, and this is King David speaking. A man after the Most High's own heart, as the scriptures say. He uh, proposed a question in this psalm asking, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So, that's a question that's being asked today by many. Because, as we said, there's a, there has been an onslaught of filth and degeneracy 
and uh, feminization and, you know, demoralizing spirit that's being pushed in the earth heavy from the from the past. You know, it's it's been going out since Esau really has come into power on the earth. But there's been different pendulum uh, swings throughout history. But in this latest time, as the scriptures say, the Lord said he will uh, do a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. I Meaning to go around. Uh, mainly through uh, feminism. Feminism changed the world. And it not only uh, made women become masculine, but it's also made men become feminine. Okay, and as the Apostle Gabar brought out and says all the time, fit the word fem feminine means minus faith. So a man being feminine, he, he he's naturally going to shy away from accountability. He's going to shy away from integrity and, and all uh, morality. Because that's the nature of a woman. And men are uh, picking up the woman's nature. So you have men in this day and age. The most high is pushing out that spirit of masculinity back in the earth. And this question is being asked by many. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way from the filth of this world? Alright. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You see that? So that's your answer. King David proposed the question. And he also gave the answer. Which that's the only answer. You have certain people out there that will say, well, my truth. Or, uh, you know, my walk. The way I look at it. The way I see it. There's only, there's only one way a man can truly cleanse himself of the pollution of this world and that's taking heed according to the word of Yahweh Basham Yahushai. Okay, and this message is only to the nation of Israel. You other nations out there, you can't be cleansed. Because your 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 spirit is is, is dirty. It's unclean. Okay? So there is no uh cleansing for you. The only uh, cleansing or purification, you can only clean something, uh, like they say in the world, you can polish a turd, but it's still a piece of shit. The only, uh, you can only clean something that was once clean, that got dirty, and it could be purified again and be cleansed again. That goes for the nation of Israel, all right? Uh, as the scriptures say, uh, I believe that's Isaiah, the first chapter, where it says, uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll get it. Isaiah chapter 1, in verse 1, Isaiah 1 and 21. How was the faithful city become an harlot? That faithful city being Jerusalem. Becoming a harlot house spiritually. Okay. It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers. Thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. Alright. I believe it's also uh, written in. Jeremiah. Somewhere in Jeremiah, it speaks of how uh, the Lord planted Israel a noble vine. How how come are you become a a, a a degenerate plant unto me? Jake uh, has become degenerates, which the scriptures uh, say, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth him. So our people have been our men. First and foremost, because the women, they're, they're totally gone. All right. But the men, they have been 
turned out by the devil. Okay. And it's only it's it's going to take a miracle. Really, it's going to it's really the our our men have been so demoralized and destroyed spiritually that it, it takes a miracle to uh get your spirit right. So and and ultimately we're under the curses as a as a nation. Which that's you know, going into something a whole a whole another story. But that's the truth. We're under the curses as a people. So even if we try to get right, we can't unless we come back to the Lord. That's what it's going to take. Okay. And ultimately, that's what we were created for as a, as a nation, as a people that we were, that's what we are put on this earth to do. That's where our true fulfillment comes from. Like it says in Romans 11, verse 7, has Israel sought that which he seeketh for? I tell thee nay, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. <laughs> okay? So only the elect are going to obtain that satisfaction for their souls. And it comes from this word and finding your place in the scriptures finding out your purpose in in the, the word of the Lord whether you, you are set up to be a teacher a prophet okay or a help but that's how, how a man is you know a believer that's how a man is going to find that satisfaction for his soul Okay, and we know if you're a woman, a young woman of marriageable age, your satisfaction is going to come from you uh, obtaining a husband, a, 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 a husband of the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, which you're of the elect. If you're an elect woman, the Most High will pair you with an elect man. Okay, that's just how it's going to be. A righteous man is given, a righteous woman is given to a righteous man. So, uh, also backing that up, what's it's written here? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, okay, and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Okay, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the meaning of life. This sums up. Your purpose as an Israelite man here on earth. This is where you're going to find fulfillment. Okay. It's not uh, the pursuit of happiness. As it says in uh, what's that, the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> okay. It's not, uh, you know, becoming rich. Rich enough to, to break the matrix. Okay. It's not to... Uh, you know, become super strong physically and and, and uh, competent in in different areas of life, having a family and you know being a leader in your community and all those things, which are all good things, right? But the true conclusion of the whole matter, the true validation and satisfaction that you're going to get in this world. Is from what? Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Alright. So that is your duty as a man. Is to fear the most high and keep his commandments. That's where your validation is going to come from. That's where your. Uh, your. Uh, that's what's going to. Build your self-esteem up to the point where it's supposed to be. That's where you're going to, you know, build your confidence and your worth, your value in this world. 
That's what we were put on here to do. And when you do that, that changes. When you start that walk, when you start that process, that changes your whole outlook on life. Okay? As Yahweh Shai said, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? For the, 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 the Gentiles... They, they stress over, roughly paraphrasing, they stress over uh, food, water, and raiment, and, and money, things of that nature. And the Lord knows you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. So that's the that's the number one. Seeking the kingdom, fearing the Most High, and keeping His commandments. Which, uh, the scriptures say, what? The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. When you live your life in a way where you don't want to make the most high angry you you the lord had, uh you want to make him happy once you show the lord that's what that's what you are living for he opens up your understanding he opens up your mind on a level that the average man can't receive because they're they're they're, they're on a total different life path ultimately to destruction because all all men the nature of men is of the earth and from dust to dust as the scriptures say from the time you breathe in your first air on the earth you're on a crash course with death but you showing the lord that you want to you're living to please him that that uh brings you on a whole another plane of existence okay And uh, what I wanted to get on that was this uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter twelve. No, 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 no. First Corinthians two. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So for us in this truth, you have a lot of guys come in this truth and they like to use big words and, and uh, you know, thousand dollar words, hundred dollar words. They, they. They come with a gimmick. They come with. Uh, they try to reinvent the will or say something that hasn't been said, do something that hasn't been done, all for vain glory, not for edification. Okay, those of us in this truth, we start when our apostles and elders are great millstone. All right, they're not the most eloquent men on the earth. You have certain men that are more eloquent than others. That have a you know a wider vocabulary than others, better uh, speaking abilities that goes for all brothers, okay. But at the end of the day, it's not about that. It's about power, demonstration of the spirit and power. It's about the the power behind your words. It's about the spirit. It's about edification. All right, which the scriptures tell us that what is that Romans eight, that uh, your spirit make of intercession to the Most High with groanings, right? That can't be uttered. So it's the actual understanding that goes deeper than words. So, uh, which which means. The wisdom of the Lord is deeper than the wisdom of this world. It's like you, you can learn more from life and experiences than you can live or learn going to college, right? 
and and take it a step further you can learn way more from experience of this truth than you can in the world it could be a man in the truth a young man 25 he's been in the truth eight years and he could know more than many 50 and 60 year old men that lived on the earth okay because he has the wisdom of the Lord of the Most High okay I'm gonna jump down for the sake of time I don't want to make this too long I believe the point is being made okay first Corinthians 2 And 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of the Most High knoweth no man but the spirit of the Most High. Okay, like nobody can read your mind or, or you know, look at you and read your spirit to the point where, you know, they know everything that's, that's going on inside you. Except, you know, the Lord. Yahushua had that power, all right? But in that same way, a man can't know what's in the what's in the uh the, the mind of the Lord. So there's no way a man on earth can just uh meditate. You meditate for ten years straight and and figure out what life is all about. <laughs> Become enlightened. No, it don't work like that. The Lord has to tap your spirit open and, and give you the download. All right. And, and even then, there's a process with that. Okay. You had the Apostle Paul. The Lord basically did that with him. But he got knocked off his high horse. He wasn't even looking for the truth. He thought he had the truth. <laughs> you see but uh verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of the most high that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high okay so we don't have the spirit of this world whatever worldly wisdom that that's uh comes from it we have the spirit of the lord and it's given to us, freely given to us. Meaning we didn't do anything to obtain it. It was a gift. And it's uh, precious. Meaning it's not you're not gonna find you're not gonna be able to, to uh just go outside and the the average person you meet, the average man you meet, and, and they have it as well. You can't go to a, a school and, and be taught it like you go to a university or whatever. Okay. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual so this knowledge, this wisdom is out of this world, literally. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, a carnal man, he can be have the highest IQ. He can have all the type of life experience in the world, been around the world, and ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? But if the Lord is not working with him to open it up his spirit, you could talk to him about this truth till he's blue in the face, and it's going to sound foolish to him, even though it makes all the sense in the world to us. Okay, you could have your, your Thomas Sowells and your different... Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's of the world, these these high level brains of of uh, 
uh, so-called black men, right? But this truth will go right over their heads. <laughs> because it's spiritually discerned. The most has to be working with you on a spiritual level to get this truth. Okay. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man, right? Because ultimately, the reason the Lord gave us his truth is to prepare us to be the future judges of the world. And as a judge, any any judge of the earth on a natural level, on a carnal level, different judges you have in the various governments of, of the earth, they should be some of the uh, most up, upstanding citizens of that nation. But we know here in Esau's rulership, these a lot of these judges are paid off. They're uh, they're wicked. Okay, they're wicked judges. They're they're unjust judges. But the Lord is preparing us to be the true righteous judges of the earth. So we have to be of high morality, of high character, of high uh, integrity and accountability. All these things we learn from the truth. Not, not in the world. We weren't taught this in the world. Okay. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of a Mashiach. So the Lord is truly working with our spirit. Okay. All these things are, are irrefutable truths. Reinforcements to you, brothers out there, to encourage you to keep pushing, to boost your faith, to know that this is the truth. Because there's nothing else out there would, that would have uh, made you the man you are today. Of, of very sharp judgment a very high character being able to take the low being able to take rebuke being truly masculine being truly red pill okay so let's keep pushing let's keep fighting and uh, as it says in Philippians the first chapter he which begun this good work in you will perform it to the day of Yahweh Shai so that's pretty much it. I hope this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rahakodash. Until the next one, Shalom.